Hi, and welcome back to The Crafty Author. My name is Anissa. I am The Crafty Author, and welcome to my quilting room. Today, we are going to do something a little different. Um, <clears throat> I had originally planned to do part two of the Scraptastic Scrap Quilt, quilting it on an embroidery machine. However, <laughs> um, I wasn't feeling really good yesterday, and so I just did not have a chance to do that and to film the video. So today we're gonna do something a little different, but I guarantee you it will be just as much fun. Um, I'm gonna pull out my serger today, and we are going to make a baby blanket with a serger, and I'm gonna teach you how to do that. Um, first, I'm going to embroider the baby's name on the blanket. Um, and I'll go through those steps to uh, steps with steps with you as well. Even though I've got videos on that already, I'm going to just show the whole process. And then um, I'm going to show you what you're going to need. So I this is the flannel part that I will be making the blanket. Um, I cut a yard of this, so just a one yard cut. And then I have another cut one yard of minky that I've cut to go with it. And I have a hoop that I'm going to hoop it in. I have stabilizer, this is medium weight tearaway stabilizer. This is a Floriani product. You can use any medium weight tearaway stabilizer. And then I'm gonna be using this um, on top of the minky because you wanna use water soluble um, stabilizer on top of anything that has like a nap on it. So that helps to keep the nap in place. So I will be using that. This is what it comes in is a bag like this. I purchased this off of Amazon and it is wash, wash away water soluble. Um, it's 12 by 10 inch sheets. And I believe this is new bro thread stabilizer and I will link to it below in the description box where I purchased that from. And so we are gonna just get right into it. So, for this portion of it, I like to, to do a method that's called floating. So I'm going to float the, uh, I'm gonna float the minky in the hoop. And what that means is, is that I will not be actually uh, hooping the minky itself. Cause I don't wanna smash it all down and you can actually distort the minky if you do that. So what I do is I put my stabilizer in the hoop first, and I'm just using my scissors to kind of hold this as a little center, to hold it steady for me is what I'm trying to say. And then I'm just gonna push my stabilizer in and now it's it's in there pretty good. I'm going to pull on it just a little bit to make sure it's nice and snug. Not too hard, you will tear it. I've done that. And then I'm just going to go ahead and tighten my hoop down here to make sure this is nice and taut. And it looks like this on the back. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, lay my minky in here. Now I have my minky folded. Actually, let me take a step back. I'm going to take my grid that came with my hoop and I am actually going to draw the lines here on the stabilizer. And this is just gonna help me to line up where I'm gonna put my uh, blanket. So this middle one here, and I used orange, so hopefully you can see this. 
but right here is really where I want to line up my my quilt so I took all my little rulers away I put them all away so what I want to do is I want to line up It's not perfectly straight, but that's okay. I'm not I'm not overly worried about it because it won't really matter. You just kind of want a an area that you can see where you want to line up with with your minky. So what I'm gonna do here now is like I said, I have my minky folded in half. So I've already got this pretty much where I want it to be. And I'm just going to use that center point to line up that minky. And I'm going to do this toward the end here. So I'm going to line this up. Just move it over. Just make sure it's on that line. And you just eyeball it. It doesn't have to be perfect. Good enough. All right, so now what I will do is I'll grab my 505 spray and I am going to peel this back about halfway and I'm gonna just give it a good spray here because I want my minky to lay flat in here. All right, so we're done stitching that out. Now I'm just gonna remove this water soluble stabilizer and I just tear it off and it tears off really easily. But if you don't get it all off, then that's okay because it'll come off with a little bit of water. So you can always spray it down. But as you can see, it turned out really nice. And I still need to take the stabilizer off, but and the hoop. So, I just do this with my fingers, really. This is not, this is gonna come up pretty easily because these letters were pretty large. So, now if you're working with smaller letters and things of that nature, a little bit tougher to pull the stabilizer off sometimes especially when you're using the adhesive sprays because it will stick to it but typically it's not really that big of a deal okay that's done clips or pins that's what you're going to want to grab so i'm going to lay this out just like this on my table And then 
I'm going to take my top piece, my little, my little fire trucks and school buses. And I'm going to make sure that they're right sides facing up because this is a directional fabric and we want to make sure that everything is lined up. So, bring that up to the top. Now, like I said, Minky moves. So, and it's already moving as I'm trying to do this. I don't know why this fabric moves so much, but it does. But once it's done, oh, it's so cute. You will, you will just love it. We are ready to start surging. So I've got you set up so that you can kind of see at an angle here. Here is the actual blade of the serger. Um, we are working with a Baby Lock Vibrant. That is what I have. I will link to this machine down below in the description box um, so that you can check that out. I paid about $350 for this thing. It works amazingly. Um, I love it. Um, I know there's a lot of questions about the threading of these machines. I'm not going to lie. Um, serger machines are kind of a pain in the butt to thread. So, um, the best thing to do is to follow the instructions on your serging machine. Also, once you have your threads already set up on your serger and you want to change them out, you can actually tie like a little thin, uh, knot um, with your new color and just kind of run it through and it will keep the, it'll change the thread for you. And then you don't have to rethread your machine. Um, and I highly suggest doing it because like I said, these can be a royal pain in the butt. Um, it just, I just spent 10 minutes trying to remember how to rethread my machine. So just a little bit of advice there. This is what I'm going to be surging with you can see the stitch it looks great i'm using red and tan thread i have gone ahead and clipped this baby quilt all over and um so yeah so normally when you're surging you can go pretty fast but I'm not going to probably be able to do that with this because I have, like I said, I've got this all clipped up here. So I've left an opening here on this baby quilt from here to here because this is where we're going to turn it when we're done. So we're just going to start surging here. I'm get the blanket underneath. And, um,. Okay, I think we're good and we're going to start. Making sure we're catching all of that. Now we're gonna flip the blanket. Now I could continue to finish this off on the serger if I wanted to. Um, and it would work out great. But I think I'm going to finish this off on the sewing machine. I'm just gonna give it a, a uh, more 
I don't know, just a different finished look. It won't be as, it won't have that surged edge on the outside. It'll be tucked in. So I pulled the pins out that I had in the center. So we don't want to do that. And now I'm just going to pull the blanket, flip it out and poke out the corners here. Oh, this is cute. Ha ha ha. So I'm going to go to my regular sewing machine and I'm going to top stitch all the way around. All right, moment of truth. Here it is. It's all sewn together. It's really cute. Looks adorable. Has his name on it. It's all stitched together. So we surged the inside of the blanket and then top stitched this outer side. So I think it looks great. Oh, it's so nice and soft and it's gonna be warm. So that's how you use a serger. You can use a serger for many things. Sergers are typically used for garment sewing. Um, it's the finished edge in your your jackets, your jeans, your shirts, and whatnot. It just gives that nice finished edge, just like that. Just like that. I make um, baby bibs and I serge the edges. I also make baby towels and I make baby bibs out of terry cloth and I serge around the edges and they turn out so cute. Um, but I find with Minky, it's just easier to serge it now Honestly, I could have just surged this all the way around. I could have just put the two pieces together and just surged it. I could have done that type of an edge. Um, but I was going after a little different look than that, so I didn't surge the edge. When I make um, receiving blankets, I do. I surge the edge around the flannel that I'm working with. So anyway, that is it for me today. If you would like to follow me on social media, the links are down below in the description box. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. It helps the um, YouTube algorithm see my videos more. Don't forget to comment. If you have questions, you can ask questions. Please be polite when you're asking questions. Also, um, don't forget to click that little bell. You'll get notified each and every time that I upload an awesomely cool new video and keep on crafting. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.